Ukraine's president has warned the country is fast running out of air defenses and artillery to fend off Russian attacks. Vladimir Zelensky warned that if U.S. Congress continues to hold up a multi-billion dollar military aid package, then Ukraine will lose its war against Russia. On Thursday, power plants were attacked in a Russian bombardment with hundreds of thousands of people being left without power. Our Eastern Europe correspondent Sarah Rainsford sent us this update. I think what we're seeing here now is clearly a sustained and a deliberate assault by Russia on Ukraine's energy system. And it started actually back in March. There were two massive attacks on this country uh, with drones and missiles that here in Kharkiv destroyed uh, all the power stations, essentially. So it left uh, this city without power for some time. They've worked to restore it, but there are rolling blackouts here, uh, a real limit on the amount of electricity uh, available. Uh, customers urge to avoid using too much. There's also generators everywhere you go on the streets. And then on Thursday morning, in the early hours, we got this uh, next huge attack. Dozens of drones and missiles fired by Russia that overwhelmed Ukraine's air defences. And in Kiev, a major power plant there has been completely destroyed. Now, I spoke to the boss of the company that ran that plant, and he says, that they can repair it. If they get the, the spare parts from uh, allies in the West, then in theory, they can rebuild that power station, get it up and running again. But he asked me what the point of that would be if they can't protect it. And that is the problem. If there are renewed Russian attacks, which looks like uh, will happen, uh, then the problem is air defenses. Uh, in Ukraine, they are extremely stretched, extremely limited, uh, and it is very difficult to protect these, these power plants. So that's why we've heard again from President Zelensky, a real plea uh, to the West to help Ukraine with its air defenses. Uh, a sense of frustration, I think, about lots of promising, promises being made but very limited aid coming through specifically in terms of air defences. And I think that's important because it is quite clear that Russia is continuing these attacks and they're not only becoming uh, more intense, these attacks, they're also more accurate. And that means for Ukraine, they're more devastating. Sarah Rainsford there. Well, earlier I spoke to Yaroslav Trofimov, who is a chief foreign affairs correspondent at the Wall Street Journal and author of Our Enemies Will Vanish. I asked him what he thinks might happen. Well, I mean, the Russians have been on the offensive already since the end of last year. Uh, they have taken the uh, city of Avdiivka, the first city they have been able to capture uh, in nearly a year. And <clears throat> every day they're inching ahead, taking a village here, you know, a few, um, another small village there. Uh, so far, uh, they're doing it at a great cost. You know, tens of thousands of Russian soldiers were killed and maimed. Uh, thousands of pieces of equipment were lost. So, so far, uh, Ukraine is holding out. But the issue of air defenses, obviously, is a key issue also in the battlefield, because Russia is using more and more of these glide bombs to devastating effect. And Ukraine just doesn't have enough air, air defense interceptors to protect its infrastructure back in Kiev and other cities and the frontline units. And, and that is one area that is uh, allowing the Russians to, to, to advance. So you would draw a line then between Ukraine's response or its performance on the battlefield and the funding uh, and the weaponry it is provided by the West? Oh, very much so, very much so. And I think the US government draws it as well. You know, when Avdiivka fell in February, uh, the White House said this this happened because uh, the Republicans uh, who control the House of Representatives haven't allowed the funding to go through, so Ukraine just ran out of ammunition. And it's true. You know, if Ukraine and Russia had roughly a parity in the number of shells that would fire a day uh, in September, October last year, now the advantage that the Russians have is about, you know, 5 to 1 to 10 to 1. So Ukraine is outgunned, it's on the defensive, and now it, it's increasingly struggling with protecting its skies uh, from the overwhelming Russian air power. And do you think that Russia has almost an endless supply of munitions? That seems to be what you're saying. It's not endless, uh, but while Ukraine is not getting American help, Russia is getting uh, ballistic missiles from North Korea. It's getting a very large supply of this long-range Shahid drones from Iran. So its allies uh, are helping it. And uh, obviously, you know, Ukraine would have it a little bit easier in the coming month once the F-16 fighter jets come online because they, because they, they can also be used for air defense. Uh, but you have this basic asymmetry. Uh, in the war, because Russia can strike and does strike anywhere in Ukraine, and Ukraine is not allowed by the U.S. or its Western allies to use any of its uh, Western-supplied weapons to strike any targets in Russia. 
and cannot use uh, these weapons to strike Russian airfields, Russian uh, oil installations, Russian refineries. And when it does strike these targets with its own domestically produced drones, it gets criticized by the, by the U.S. government. Yaroslav Trofimov there um, talking about Ukraine and the Russia war.